Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and berries. It's Magic Brad here for the Magic Brad Show. I'm going to put my little thing up there so you can see what the what, what heck is it? There it is. Dun, 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 the Magic Brad Show .com. If you are interested in having a little conversation online here, you can go to the Magic Brad Show and uh, schedule a time, or spontaneously you can just connect with me and uh, we can make it happen. Um, we may be having some guests come on. I had someone scheduled and something happened with uh, some family stuff they had to go take care of. So I went out and sought out on the internet some other people to come and join me and talk about the concept of affiliate marketing. And uh, so they're, they're trying to get on now. The StreamYard platform is something new to them, so they're learning. So they might be showing up. And then someone else has a uh, nine-to-five job. So they are uh, they're committed to working for their employer. <laughs> so sometimes people can come on spontaneously, but sometimes they can't. But what I was going to talk about is the concept of affiliate marketing. For those of you that don't know what it is, um, I'm going to preface this by some people think that it's a scam thing, which is bizarre because it's it's sort of been um, – adopted by the network marketers and the MLMers that some people look at the pyramids as being scams, you know, a pyramid scam versus a pyramid scheme, like a Ponzi scheme. And um, most of these things aren't really illegal, um, but people claim that they are. Um, I'm not a big fan of multi-level marketing. I used to be, but I've just decided that the commissions or the percentages are too teeny and you have to develop an army as a leader, and you have to corral all these people around, and it's really hard to keep them all in aligned and training them. And uh, sometimes people leave, and when they leave, the whole branch breaks off, and they take all their people with them. So I'm not a real big fa fan of the multi-level marketing world, and it's changing. I think maybe it'll come back. And some people, again, get affiliate marketing mixed up with multi-level marketing. Affiliate marketing is one level, sometimes two. Sometimes there's a second level where they have like uh, affiliate managers take care of the affiliates. But it, it, so if you think that two levels is multi-level, I guess you could say that. But it isn't, you know, it doesn't go down in, into thousands and thousands of people. Everybody's their own individual in affiliate marketing. The best way I can make, uh, I can explain affiliate marketing is basically you're a broker. You're an independent contractor promoting a product or service, and you only get paid when you make a sale. So it's a, like a commission salesperson. So that's kind of what affiliate marketing is for those of you that don't know. Um, it's uh, it's not illegal, although there are some illegal things out there, so you got to look out because there's people that create crazy stuff. But you do your due diligence and figure it out. And I think the basic essence of if something is illegal or not is if there's a product or service involved with it. So there's a money thing, and are you providing a product or service? So some of these things, what they are is they're membership type of platforms, and as a member, you get access to training. So it's kind of like a college. When you're a student, you get access to training, or you get access to education. So I mean, you can call anything a scam. If you call it some of these things a scam, then the college system is a scam. <laughs> so it isn't a matter of scam. It's a matter of uh, if you can make it work for you. There's people that go to college and pay a lot of money to go to college. Then they drop out. They drop out of college. And then they don't use their college education because they dropped out. So is that a scam? Or did somebody just quit? So it's not necessarily a scam. Sometimes people just uh, they haven't got it in them. They had, they haven't got the entrepreneurial spirit to to keep on going and going and going and never quitting and and, and not looking as at failure as a failure, but looking at it as a stepping stone of education, moving on to something else. So, but but some people get uh, they they try these things thinking that it's going to be some kind of snap your finger and fill your bank account with a hundred thousand dollars. It doesn't work that way any more than when you plant seeds in a garden. You have to wait months and months and months before you bear fruit. It takes time and it takes focus and takes perseverance, takes concentration. And some people think that it's a miracle and they, they, don't, uh, they don't get their miracle because that's not the way it works. 
and then they get get disgruntled and they make complaints and they post stuff on the Better Business Bureau and hey, they took all my money and I asked for a refund. They wouldn't give it. And they whine and complain and they get bad uh, reviews. And then other um, other providers and things look at that and they go, hey, that's not a good company. It's not true. <laughs> I mean, there are things like that out there. I will give you that. There is stuff out there, but the majority of the platforms are legitimate, real, ordinary things. Like, here's an example. Um, I just recently got my AWeber account closed and my Stripe account closed because they don't like one of the programs that I'm promoting. Well, I could complain and say that Stripe and AWeber are, are um, scams because they literally cashed my or, or billed me the day before they canceled my account. And there were no talking to them. In fact, um, I told them I would not, not uh, do promote the thing via their email platform. And then they said that it was on my website and that was still too much. They, they wouldn't provide any service. So I have to shift gears and use some other email provider. No big deal. If they don't want to work with me, I don't want to work with them. But that doesn't mean that they're a scam. I don't like the way they operate <laughs> because it affected me, but it doesn't mean that they're a scam. So the whole concept of scams and things like that, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it's really a scam. Uh, let me check here with the... Uh, he's, he's checking his microphone. I will go, I am online now, period. I will, oh, I will, I will, gosh, I am online now. That's okay. So he's checking his microphone. He's got some, there's always technical issues and stuff like that. Now, if, if little issues like that is what prevents a person from succeeding, self-employment and being an entrepreneur is not for you. You should just go get a job as a wage slave, punch your clock, collect your check, and go home. So if you're not if you're if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you need to be a little more thick-skinned and be able to pivot and innovate and work with it. So that's somewhat my message for the concept of affiliate marketing. That's all it really is is being the middleman. And some of the products, um, Coca-Cola has an affiliate program. Best Buy has an affiliate program. I believe Target has an affiliate program. Amazon is a big giant affiliate platform. So if you think that affiliate marketing is a scam, <laughs> um, there's a lot of, there's, there's a, a bridesmaids dresses company here in Edina, Minnesota, that they have an affiliate program. So you can earn a commission from promoting bridesmaids dresses in the wedding industry. That's not a scam. They make the dresses, they deliver the dresses, and the, the salesperson that promoted it and did the marketing gets a commission off of it. That's the way it works. Um, what else is there? There's um, some software. Email programs. You've heard of email like Constant Contact. Even Aweber has an affiliate program. Aweber has an affiliate program, and they canceled me from my affiliate program. So go figure. They just didn't like it, whatever. So what else has an affiliate program? Um, Constant Contact. I believe I, I Contact has an affiliate program. This platform right here, this StreamYard platform that I'm using right now, they have an affiliate program to them. Um, it's not a uh, where you can earn commissions, but you can earn credits. So if you want to use this StreamYard platform like I'm doing here with, uh, here we go, I can show you mymagicdeal.com. This goes redirected to a capture page where I collect email addresses and people uh, can learn about some of the program that I'm that I'm promoting. But uh, the uh, StreamYard does all these cool little things like this. You can put these things on here. You can uh, put uh, these kind of little things on there. Affiliate marketing, you can do this stuff with StreamYard. Oh, and by the way, we do this Marketing Monday thing. We'll be doing that again um, this upcoming Monday, talking about closing the sale with my new friend, uh, Michael Helmke. So that's the story, Morning Glory. 
Um, affiliate marketing is not a scam. It's just a method of compensation for a person that does some work. So you go out and you promote this product or service. You can, there's so many different things that you can promote. Um, all these different electronic devices like cell phone cases, you can sell t-shirts and things. Those are, those are, uh, there's affiliate programs for that. Um, you can promote stuff on, uh, on, I think on eBay. I think eBay has a, an affiliate program where you can earn a percentage of someone else's sale. So if you got a friend that's out there promoting and selling stuff on eBay and you promote his links, you'll get a little cut of the commission. I think I can't, I need to do a disclaimer. Everything that I say isn't necessarily true. I'm just giving you some information so you can go out and research it because the way the internet is, it's dynamic and always changing. So something could be true yesterday and it's not true today or tomorrow. It changes all the time. So you gotta be aware of that and just deal with that kind of thing. Um, what else do I wanna talk about? I did want to talk a little bit about closing the sale because I think um, some people are concerned about um, having to sell. I don't like to sell. <laughs> and my philosophy on it is if the product is good and if the person that's promoting the product is known, liked, trusted, and respected, that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to be open and honest with you, showing you my face and who I am. And I'm trying to get to know who you are so you can get to know who I am. And then hopefully you'll like me and we'll like each other and we'll have respect for each other and we will trust each other and we can work together. And either you want to buy a product from me or you want to sell me something or maybe you want to work together on a joint venture and collaborate. But when you get all those factors together and you get the relationship connected, you bond the relationship and make it a good, solid, secure, trusted relationship. The sale is just going to happen. If the person's got money and they want their product, they'll buy it. It's as simple as that. So I don't think you have to close the sale. I don't believe in a lot of those, those uh, assumptive closes and, you know, um, ABC, always be closing. I think those are old school techniques. And I think people are, uh, they have too many choices these days. I was just LinkedIn. No big deal. That's a different platform, LinkedIn. There's, there's too many choices these days for a person, so you don't necessarily have to um, buy from a certain person. Um, you can just sometimes go right directly to the manufacturer and make purchases these days with, uh, with the internet that's given us access to everybody. So people, what I'm getting at is people don't necessarily need to buy from a certain person anymore. They can go elsewhere. So they need to know, like, trust, and respect you before they'll do business with you. And if they do, then they'll do business with you. This younger generation, basically, they say, don't call me, don't email me, don't um, send me an email, don't text me, don't send me a postcard, don't knock on my door. If I want something, I'll come to you. That's just the way that it is these days. So we're living in a different world. So let me check on my friend Wes to see if he's a... Uh, making some progress. I think he's having some challenges. But that's the way it works sometimes. Um, so that's what affiliate marketing is. And then the concept of closing the sale, because I was gonna I was gonna have this conversation with my friend David Kirkaby, because he's a sales trainer and he uh, somewhat agrees with me that the method for doing this isn't necessarily um, doing these closing techniques and setting that hook and reeling in that prospect. It's a matter of service and being of service to this uh, this prospective customer. And if you are of service, they will buy the product because they have the money and they want it. So that's my take on uh, the summary of sales. And we'll be talking more about sales um, next Monday. I'm also doing a series with a woman. She wrote a very, oh, there he is. His devices are not connected though. So he's got to connect his devices before I let him on here. So Wes, I'm not sure if you can hear me or not, if that's Wes. Yes, it is Wes, but you need to, uh, what is it? Uh, StreamYard needs to accept access or, or, get, or get access, you need to uh, accept it, access to your uh, microphone and your speakers or your, your camera. So if you can get that set up, then I'll uh, bring you on. But other than that, I don't know what, 
Yeah, I know I can't I can't let you on until your guests will need to connect their mic and cam before you can add them to the stream. So that's just the way this stuff works. And these things all take a learning curve, just like when you tried to learn to uh, ride a bicycle. You didn't do it right away. You had to learn. You had to use training wheels. So I like to help people that are just getting into this affiliate marketing thing because I've been in business pretty much all my life. Ever since I was a little kid, I started doing magic, and that was my employment. I was a magician. I would travel around and do shows at uh, corporate events and association conventions. I was even a ringmaster in a circus for two weeks, believe it or not, for the Jose Coles Circus. Um, so, yeah, if you're interested in this concept of affiliate marketing, uh, you can get a hold of me, and here's how you get a hold of me. You go to contactmagicbrad.com. That's got my phone number if you want to give me a call with a phone. We don't do it like this anymore. We do it like this. See? You hold your phone like this. <laughs> so you don't do that no more. Times have changed. So looks like Wes is... Uh, Always oh, having a hard time with the signal, external mic, but the app still says it isn't working. Yes. Well, we'll have to give it a try some other time, Wes. That's okay. Um, so if you want to contact me at contactmagicbrad.com here, you can connect with me on Facebook Messenger. That's a good way to, to message back and forth. We can do a Zoom call on video like this, or we could do a stream yard call like this, or we could get on the phone. Or if you're local, we could almost meet from a distance. <laughs> so that's the way it works. Well, I've gone for 17 minutes. I, I don't like to do my videos too long. I know that some people do these long two hour webinars. I keep them kind of condensed so that you can actually digest it all. Because there's a lot to learn. And uh, you know, how do you eat a giant elephant? One bite at a time. So just taking little chunks of, of education is much easier than trying to learn it all at once. So the essence of marketing, in my opinion, and I'll use that disclaimer, this is my opinion, there's no rules. <laughs> it's, there's the, Wes is trying to get on again. Device is not connected. Come on, Wes, you can rattle it up a little bit. So there's three things. Plant the seed, nurture the plant, harvest the fruit. Now, what do I mean by that? Planting the seed is generating leads. Now, I don't mean contacting someone on Facebook and, and plastering them with your affiliate link and your offer, telling them they should buy it. That doesn't work. That makes people mad and, and gets people, uh, they, 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 they don't like that. And I know because I've done it. <laughs> I apologize. So planting the seed, that's generating a lead. Finding somebody that's interested in what it is you're offering. And the way you do that is you create curiosity and make appeal and make it look attractive and people will inquire. When they inquire, it's a matter of generating the relationship. So you start here and you got to work your way through and develop that relationship. It takes time. It's kind of like um, dating. You don't just go out and say, hey, let's get married and have kids. It doesn't work that way. It takes time. You got to go to dinner. You got to go to a movie. You got to get to know each other. You got to be equally yoked. You got to be connected. And eventually, that relationship, there's a trust factor there. And once you get the trust factor in place, that's when the sale happens. So, that's the three things plant the seed, nurture the plant, harvest the fruit, generate the lead, build a relationship, close the sale. And the reason I brought those three things up is. I'm doing another series with this uh, woman. She wrote a book. That's what I was telling you about this book. It's called Sell Like Jesus. And it's Christian-based biblical principles for sales. And we're going to talk about the lead generation and how Jesus might do it. WWJD, how would, what would Jesus do to generate leads? <laughs> it feels weird talking like this because it almost feels sacrilegious. But I'm not a real religious kind of person. I'm sort of a New Age Christian. <laughs> okay, back to some reality here. Generating leads. How would Jesus generate leads? Number two, generating the building the relationship, establishing rapport. How would Jesus establish rapport? So she's going to explain to us with the biblical scripture and uh, uh, some chapters from her book 
on that generation of leads for the, the Christian entrepreneur. And then the last one is closing for the sale, asking for the money. They do that at the church. They pass the plate and they ask for the money, right? <laughs> so enough. I've been on for 20 minutes and 17 seconds. I'm going to sign this off. If you want to know more about me, you can go to magicbrad.com. I've got some of my offers on there. I've also got, uh, I think, a video. And if you want to uh, get on and talk about, if you want to come on my show, what I do with these videos is I record the videos and then I put them up on YouTube and propagate them out on social media. And um, it helps promote your business, whatever your business might be. And um, we want to do that as a series. So it looks like Wes just messaged me. He's having a hard time getting in here. Okay, folks, that's all for now. I appreciate you taking the time. Peace and happiness. This is Magic Brad signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day. Be well, be safe, and be nice. Be kind. Don't riot. Don't light things on fire. Don't shoot people. Don't uh, break windows. Um, don't scream and yell. It's disturbing the peace. It's not a peaceful protest if you're screaming. Chill out. Relax. Okay, be well. Bye. See ya. Ciao. Oh, here we go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.